Lesson 4.9, Model Division with Regrouping. We can use base 10 blocks to model division with regrouping. We can use the tens and ones to model the dividend. We divide the tens and regroup if necessary. Then divide the ones and we write any leftover ones as the remainder. Here we have 52 divided by 4. And 52 is 5 tens and 2 ones. We can regroup the 5 tens and 2 ones as 4 tens and 12 ones. We break apart one of these tens into ones and regroup it to the ones place so we have 12 ones. Then we put a 10 into each group. We put our four tens, one in each group, and we divide the ones evenly into the four groups. We can see there are 13 in each group. 52 divided by 4 is equal to 13. We divide the tens into equal groups first because any tens that won't fit into the groups that are left over can be regrouped as ones and put into the equal groups. Here we have 45 divided by 3. That means we have 4 tens and 5 ones divided by 3. Because it's divided by 3, our divisor is a 3, we make 3 groups. And we can take the tens and put them equally into the groups. We take one ten away and put it into a group. We take another ten and put it into the next group. We take away another ten and put it into the third group. And now we have one ten and five ones left over. And we can turn this one ten into ten ones. Now we have fifteen ones and we can put them equally into the three groups. We put three of them, one in each group. We can do it again. We could put three more, one in each group. We can put three more, one in e into each group. And we have three left. We can put one of these into each group. We have 15 in each group, 45 divided by 3 is equal to 15. Here we have 73 divided by 5. That's 7 tens and 3 ones divided by 5. We have 1 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 tens and 3 ones. Because it's divided by 5, our divisor is a 5, we make five groups. Now we can share the tens equally in the five groups. We put a ten in the first group, we put a ten in the second group, put a ten in the next group, and we can put one more ten in the last group. Now we have two tens and three ones left over, and sometimes more than one ten will have to be broken apart into ones when regrouping. We can break apart these two tens into twenty ones. Now we can start sharing the ones equally into the five groups. We have five groups. We can put a one in each of the five groups. We can put another group of five, one in each group. Now we have 12 in each group, we can do it again. We have 5 here, we can put 1 in each group. We've got one more group of 5 that we can put into the groups, one each. We can see there are 14 in each group. We have 3 left over. 73 divided by 5 is equal to 14 remainder 3. We first share the tens into equal groups. If we share the ones first, we add an extra step to the model, it will take longer to solve. It's more efficient to share the tens first. Here we have 34 divided by 2, so we know we're going to have two equal groups. 
if we start with the ones, we have these four ones. See, it's three tens and four ones. We can put the four ones into the group. Now, if we put the tens equally into the group, we can put a 10 here and a 10 here, but we have a 10 left over that needs to be broken into ones and put into the groups equally. We've added an extra step. If we did the tens first, we would share the tens equally, regroup the leftover tens as ones, then share the ones equally. That's three steps. If we do the ones first, like we tried to do this time, we would share the ones equally, like we did. We'd share the tens equally, now we would regroup the leftover tens as ones, and our extra step is sharing the ones again. We already shared them in the beginning. We'd have to share them again. That's an extra step. If we do tens first, we have less steps, and it's more efficient. We go quicker. 34 divided by 2 is equal to 17. We have 17 in each group. Whenever the dividend is not a multiple of the divisor, we will have a remainder. We have 32 divided by 5. 5 is our divisor. Well, the multiples of 5 are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and so on. 32 is not a multiple of 5. It's nowhere near in the products of 5, are they? The 5 facts. So we know 32 is not a multiple of 5. And we think, well, 5 times 6 is equal to 30. So we know 32 divided, divided by 5 is equal to 6, and we have 2 left over. We have a remainder 2. So just by looking at this, if we know our 5 facts, we know that there's going to be a remainder because 32 is not a multiple of 5. Instead of using base 10 blocks, we can draw quick pictures to represent longs of 10 and units of 1s. We can make a line for a long of 10 and a dot for units of 1. Or we could even use a little circle for the units of 1 or a little square, couldn't we? Here we have 78 divided by 3. We need to see how many times 3 can fit into 78. 78 is 7 tens and 8 ones. So the first thing we do is we start putting tens into each of our three groups, our divisors of three. So we have three groups. We're going to put tens into each group equally. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, but we can't put them equally into groups anymore. We still have one 10 and eight ones left and we can regroup them as 18 ones. We have six tens. We can take away six tens from our 78 as 60. That's going to leave 18. That's one 10 and eight ones regrouped as 18 ones. We have two tens in each group, so we put a two in the tens place above the seven tens. We divide the 18 ones evenly in the three groups. We see we put six ones into each of our groups. We know that six times three is 18. We put a six in the ones place above the eight. We subtract three times six as 18 and get a zero. And we see that 78 divided by three is equal to 26. We have 26 in each group. Now let's use some higher order thinking skills. Lisa divided 42 oatmeal cookies into seven boxes. Then she divided 63 chocolate cookies into the same boxes. How many cookies are in each box? Well, we can solve this problem two different ways. The first way is we would divide each dividend by seven get a quotient, and we would add those quotients. 
42 divided by 7 is equal to 6 cookies. 63 divided by 7 is equal to 9 cookies. That's the oatmeal ones. That's the chocolate ones. We add them together. And we see there's 15 cookies in each box. And the second way we can do this is we can add 42 plus 63 to get a sum of 105. We add the dividends, then divide their sum by the divisor 7. We do 105 divided by 7. We need to see how many times 7 will fit into 105. And we think, well, 10 times 7 is 70. We subtract that. And we have 35 left over. And we think, well, 5 times 7 is 35. We subtract that. We have 0 left over. Our partial quotients, 10 and 5, are 15. That's 15 cookies. We got the same answer doing it two different ways. And you may decide that one way is easier than another way. Here we have 49 divided by 3. That's 4 tens and 9 ones. And we need to divide it into three equal groups. So our dividend then is a 49, our divisor is a 3. We make three groups first because that's our divisor. And we share the tens equally into the groups. We have one 10 and nine ones left over. We regroup the leftover 10 as ones. Now we share the ones equally into the three groups. We do them one at a time so that we make the groups equal. We put one in each group. We do it again with three more. We do it again with three more. And again with three more. And it looks like we can do it one more time, two more times. That was one more time. And that was the two more times. And we can see we have one left over. And how many are in each group? We have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 in each group, so our quotient is 16. We have one little counter left over, so our remainder is 1. The number of ones that are left over will be our remainder. Which model makes sense and which model is nonsense for 57 divided by 3? So we have model A, we have three groups here. We have model B, we have three groups here. Our divisors are three, so yes, they both have three groups. But which model makes sense because it has 57 counters divided equally into three groups? And which model is nonsense because the tens weren't regrouped and the three groups aren't equal? So which one do you think is the model that makes sense? If you said model B, you're right. It's got the same amount in each group. And if we count the counters, there's 57 of them. That means model A is nonsense because the tens weren't regrouped. Look, this has two tens, that's 20. This has two tens, that's 20. But this one only has 17. Those aren't equal groups. So model A is the nonsense model. In our next lesson, 4.10, we're going to learn to place the first digit for a quotient in a long division problem. Try to be a better person than you were yesterday and have a really great day. Bye!